so there's a couple of things to take note of at the beginning of this video you hear that train blowing its horn so we know that things have been in motion before the scene opens and the scene that we see here is the end of the video coming back so we know there's going to be a return of repetition and perhaps most importantly we see that that cop doesn't have a gun in his holster now that makes it seem very unrealistic if we were supposed to look at these two people as real individuals with biographies and desires and interests but we're not this is a structural relationship and that makes it different from ethnic groups one ethnic group does not depend on the existence of the other for it to have its own identity race does race is actually produced through a relation of social domination and it can only exist in a relation of social domination that means if the relation of domination disappears if it's overcome then those racial categories will dissipate or dissolve but in this relationship that we're seeing personified here we have whiteness personified by the cop and it's important to note that actually the cop needs the other here more than the other needs the cop. In fact, the other doesn't need the cop at all. But because we're talking about a structural relationship, I mean, it seems kind of strange when we're watching this, we think maybe this guy is just going to run away. The cop's back is hurt, he's exhausted, and at some points in the video he does, he seems to run away. But he can't escape because we're not talking about individuals here, we're talking about social structures, and those can only be transformed by collective action, by social groups and resistance. And that resistance has to challenge forms of racialization. Policing is a form of racialization. Incarceration is a form of racialization. And violence, white terrorism, is a form of racialization. As Angela Davis says, there is an unbroken line of police violence in the United States that takes us all the way back to the days of slavery, the aftermath of slavery, the development of the Ku Klux Klan. In the construction of white identity, you can see, and it's personified here in the video, that the attempt to dominate the other actually has a self-undermining, self-defeating effect on the identity of whiteness. Because our identities are always constituted through our relations with others, if we use the systematic debasement of the other to define ourselves, we too are debased. And we can see that here represented by the use of um, pepper spray, which in effect harms them both. Now the way we usually think about racial violence, we think about it as violence against the body. But we see here the move into the home, into the private space, and we can read that as a kind of move into one's own self-identity, one's own identity, one's consciousness. And the struggle continues there. Um, there's always a struggle against white supremacy within oneself in a white supremacist society because the culture is permeated with white supremacist norms, values, principles, uh, imagery, and they must be constantly resisted. Now we see here that the struggle, the chase, is moving up toward the bedroom, which is the most intimate space of the home, and we could think of it as the most intimate part of one's own identity, where one is alone, but yet whiteness has followed. And at this point in the video, it's going to take an unusual turn from what we've seen so far of the straight-out struggle. There's a pause, there's things slow down. And it's when things slow down that we can reflect. And we see a reflection um, represented by the mirror in the bed where each one's identity is reflected through the other. But it's important how they're sitting on the bed. Whiteness is facing the wall. It's facing a dead end. And blackness is looking out the window. It has imagination. And we call this standpoint theory. Those who are oppressed have a better understanding of the system and a better understanding of alternatives to it and so this moment of reflection produces this image of an alternative of raising one's hands in liberation from the structural relation of domination. This video is the best portrayal of race as a social relation of domination that I've ever seen. It personifies how racial hierarchy and in particular white supremacy is constantly actualized and perpetually resisted. Beyond the acts and lives of particular individuals, we can see race here as a dynamic relation of power and a form of rule that relies on objectification, ideology, and the practices of coercion. 
In order to reproduce this racialized form of rule, the boundaries of racial identity must be continually policed. As W.E.B. Du Bois wrote, the problem of the 20th century is the problem of the color line, and as recent history demonstrates, that color line is still being policed and resisted today.